All right, welcome back, uh, guys from the back of the bus. We're talking about uh, how to utilize objects in the classroom. And we have another object with us. It is this. Um, let's see here. John's looking at it intently. And I also have some pictures clo like, uh, close up. But we're yeah, I don't know model. this one. This is uh, going to be tough. We are, and I'm going to open it up, too. Uh, we're going to model how you could uh, utilize this in a classroom and what you could do with it. What's it made out of? Uh, it's made out of metal, um, kind of a flimsier type of metal. So you got any um, letters or words on there that are uh, legible that you can read or anything? Anything personalized, maybe? Nothing personalized, but... This is looking like it's in a different language. Does nothing for me. <laughs> Got mit unus. Okay. Okay. What's the, the symbol there in the middle? It is like a crown. crown. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. What's, what, how big is it or how much does it weigh? Um, I'd probably say it's probably a couple ounces. It's not that sturdy. Um, made of metal. Um, it's got like a metal smell to it. Okay, so made of metal, but it looks like that uh, it's been painted, I guess, perhaps a gold. Do we, we have any chipping of the paint on there or anything? Uh, there's a little discoloration you can see there. Um, up That's on the probably just from storage, yeah. But um, you can see a little on the back, too. There's a little bit of uh, wear and tear. So it's definitely a little older, okay? Um, it's got a piece of flimsy metal in between as you open it, right? Yes. Okay. It, it bends down. So you take this piece and you would hold something. There, huh? Yes. You get any, any close-ups on it in the slide, maybe? Or? Yeah, let's pull up the slide. Yeah. I need to really study it. Okay, that's a front. So that's a, a close-up of the front of the object. So we've, so, so we've established that it's metal. We've established that there's some wear on it. We've... Um, Let's get the size. I think the size is in the next one. It's about three inches, three inches by three inches. This is the back of it. And again, you can see some of the wear. There's a hinge here. So it, like we said, it opens up. With the hinge. any idea on the language? I do. Do you? Of course. <laughs> Okay, so this is small. It's compact. Uh, you have to open it. There's something in there that is of use to the person who carries this around. Okay. Um, you know, if you think of today's use, how thin it is. It, yeah, it is thin. So this this can go in your in your pocket. Yeah. Or your pocketbook, or your your uh, bag, or whatever the case may be. Um, there's some uses right there. You see, at, at first glance, I almost thought it was like a um, a cigarette case holder like they used to carry around in the 20s where they put their cigarettes. You got it. It's Did a I? cigarette. It's a, it's a cigarette holder. Yep. Okay. Any Anything else we can we can pull from this? Ah, jeez. Uh... So I liked how, how, how you got to that, though. You got to how it, it, it's small. It's something you could probably pay, uh, put in your pocket. Um, you could store stuff in it. So um, those are some uh, definite clues, which in, in, in that was a good way of, of coming to it was a cigarette carrier. If we ran the translation, which you know, um, what would we find, Brian? If we, if we put it into uh, translation, um, it means God is with us. On a cigarette case holder. And it's German. 
So would this have been produced by a German company or by the German government, do you think, for its um, citizens? Good question. It, I don't see any markings anywhere that give an exact date. So if I don't have that, if I don't have an exact date, what are some strategies that you might tell your students on how you could date it? Well, first off, I would look at the crown and okay. I, would, uh, I would look at periods of German history when they had a king or a um, monarch of some kind, uh, which as they may know from our study of World War I that ended after World War I with the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call when monarch leaves the, the crown? Abdicates. Abdicate. So when uh, the abdication of uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, uh, they essentially never have a king again. So I would look at the period before World War I uh, in order to narrow context. So to give you guys some, I, some, I, some ideas here, this was something that was used um, by, the, by the Prussian military second half of the 19th century, um, moving into like the period we were talking about into the uh, German um, empire stage when we're, when we're talking about pre-World like World War I. This slogan, God is with us, was brought back by the Nazis. Um, so that's something that you could look at um, to, to identify it. It's kind of, it's, I mean, I, I, I've seen a couple of cigarette holders from the twenties and I'm glad I have you two in front of me because, and, and now we're looking at one. I'm wondering, have either of you seen one of these cigarette holders with the actual brand on there of a cigarette, like, uh, I don't know, Camel or, or Marlboro uh, or, or it, it almost, and the reason why I ask, you know, it almost seems like a, like a missed opportunity for the cigarette company where you could have, made this and, and just in the whole world of marketing itself where you could have been making this for your customer and rather than put your your brand name on there you're using this um and and we all know that you know with with the cigarette companies they were you know big on advertising you know when, when they weren't allowed to be on tv anymore they would get you know kind of fancy and have a cigarette smoking ad in stadiums this way they were able to get on tv somehow so i mean that's just something interesting that i that it comes up so my observation could be did that lead or, or is that because of the manufacturing of cigarettes was different were were was was this designed for home rolled cigarettes like sitting some like somewhere in rolling your own cigarettes and this is how you carried them because because Another question, like, I mean, you're right. Wouldn't you, I mean, you buy a pack of cigarettes. Hopefully kids yeah. don't know anything about that today. Right. Um, but you buy a pack of cigarettes, the brand is on there. Um, right. Why would you have something like this? Why not just use that pack? Why not, like, why not um, just utilize something else? Like, why have something right. elaborate like this? What or could is this it other issue? Did, well, did I mean, you could see why they would carry that in the trenches to kind of protect them. I mean, that part I get. Could it be how they're issued too, though, Brian? I mean, if, if you're sitting there and they're, instead of issuing a pack, you're issuing them four or five at a time as like a daily or, or weekly ration, um, there could be a way instead of going by a pack or by a, you know, would it just be a, a rationing type thing and the protection aspect that John yeah. alluded to? Actually, can we go back to this? You think this could be a, could be a status symbol? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Why? Why not? I mean, you know, if the mermaid on a Starbucks coffee cup is almost like a status symbol today, what makes you think that people wouldn't have been fixated on status symbols during that time period? You know, really. Hmm. Can we go back to the slide where it's actually opened up? I just want to see something. And this is just because, like, you know, when you're looking at something that that the military has used, there you go. When you look at something that, that the military has used. Yeah, I, I think personally, the medic in me goes, okay, it can be used one way, but I have to think, you know, like a scavenger as well. I mean, the medic in me that actually served on the front lines, I mean, if I didn't smoke uh, and I don't, 
this is something, I mean, since you're talking about protection, that this is what it was designed for, this is something that I would carry uh, bandages in uh, or Band-Aids. And, and we know from that time period, um, Carlisle, uh, Carlisle bandages, I'm sure you have quite a few of them there in your, in your collection. They were carried almost in like a sardine can. It almost looked like where you, you would open it up. But, you know, if I didn't have that option and I'm a medic, um, I'm going to put something in there that I would probably want to keep sterile. And I'm sure depending on whatever some of these guys did in the military, if they didn't smoke, um, I'm sure they found another use for this. Um, that, that's the thing that always fascinates me about objects that are being carried by military people because, you know, while there is one use for it, uh, that why it was designed, they usually find other uses for it. And I'm just speaking from personal experience. I didn't notice this before, but this, like these things here, yeah. you, do, you, do you think that's where they put the rolling papers? Like I would honestly say, yeah, that, that's, that, that this was, that's the reason why you have a tray is that they probably rolled their own cigarettes the tobacco itself was um, was kept over in here, and yeah, probably the rolling papers were put over here because rolling papers were sold. They still are today in, in a square, but sure. Huh. I mean, if I'm in a bind and I need to keep uh, suture needles uh, clean, you know, I'll double it up in some Ziplocs, but if I'm working in a trench, uh, I'll put this in as just another layer. I mean, there's just, there's so much you can go off of with an object. Um, and as much as the three of us know about, you know, wars and objects, you know, you, you look at it, gosh, a dozen times and you're like, you know what, if I was in a real bind, I can use it for this, you know? And I, and I think the whole, like, how could you use this? There's a variety of ways you could right. use it. I think right. I like the terminology on the front. I like the symbolism on the, sure. on the front. Um, again, you can ask your students a lot of different questions about the use, why they would have it. Um, I think you could connect with students who are interested in different things. I mean, everyone has something that really interests them um, in their lives. And if you can connect a certain piece of history to it, um, maybe somebody really is, is interested in the rolling of cigarettes or, or other things. Um, this might be, like, be something that you could have that conversation with a student about in, in connecting what it must have been like to be in a trench. Um, your imagination, I think, is, is your only limit. Yeah. And, and let's just say, for example, uh, you know, when you're talking about kids and imagination being your only limit, um, if you didn't have somebody or a dry place to roll cigarettes, but you're the guy that has this, where you're able to roll cigarettes, I bet you become a very popular guy all of a sudden. Um, you know, just when you think of conditions, when you think of imagination being your only limit, when you think about the needs and wants of people in desperate situations, you know, absolutely. Interesting. Anything else that you guys could think of that how you could use this or why you would use it in your classroom? No, I, I probably wouldn't have given this as much thought if you two weren't around. Uh, that is the benefits of this too. Uh, I mean, I mean, if you think, you know, three guys uh, who met on the back of a bus who were, you know, keeping out of trouble by talking about this stuff. And yes, we were talking about this stuff. If, if three grown men could sit here and talk, you know, for hours on something like this on uses, I mean, imagine what a 13 or 14 year old could do. However, I don't know what the difference between a 13 and 14 year old is between us, you know, but I mean, that is, the, you're, you're losing all our credibility, man. Come on. No, that's okay. I mean, well, I mean, the, that's the great thing about doing this though, is that there's that, that little kid in you, you know, really, um, when you look at it, I mean, if who's to say you can't put a rubber band over this and just, you know, put something on there and flick it out of buddy. I mean, really, um, it is what it is. Right. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed um, listening to us talk about a cigarette case. Um, we've got more for you. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.